Hi everybody, it's Malachi Dawson. Welcome or welcome back to Gen Z on the Narrow Road, the podcast. I'm so incredibly excited for today's episode. Let's hop into it. First of all, isn't this crazy? We're on episode seven. Hello. We have been doing this for seven weeks. That is absolutely mind blowing. I've so enjoyed this journey. And guys, I cannot wait because we have some incredible people coming on in the next couple weeks. But for today, I'm gonna be answering you guys' questions. I put a little poll on Instagram and just said, ask me some questions for the podcast. And let me tell y'all, y'all did not disappoint. Y'all pulled through with the questions. I'm talking about y'all had me thinking. Like I was going over these questions and I was like, this is insane. Like these people, this is good. Like they were not shallow questions at all so deep and so good and so today we're gonna dive into them so these are a Christian girl answering other friends questions let's get into it I just pulled out five questions that I really liked and we're just gonna go through those today um, one of the questions that I'm not answering is my testimony I did my first podcast episode was on my testimony so if y'all are curious for a more in-depth what my testimony is and where I'm at now. You guys can go watch that in episode one. It should be on YouTube on a little playlist. It's on there. So you can go watch that. Okay, question number one is this. Wow. Question number one is this. How do you get out of a lukewarm relationship with God and become fully devoted? That's a good question. Let's talk about it. If this is something that you were going through, the number one thing I can tell you is go read John chapter 15. John chapter 15 is what changed my walk with God. The more you spend time with God, the more you begin to look like him. And that is what we call sanctification. Whenever you get saved by God, you're saved. And what comes next is sanctification. That is basically a pruning, refining season where God is taking out all of your old, all the bad things, all of the worldly desires, and he's filling you with all of his good things. And if you guys can just rest on John chapter 15, it talks so much about remaining in God and then he shall remain in you. And that is whenever he begins to prune you and take things away from you you and then give you all the good things give you all his blessing give you um you begin to walk in your god-given talents your god-given abilities things like that and so that right there is how you are going to stay with god and i had an encounter with god and that changed my life that encounter with god it was an erupting like it stopped me in my tracks and it changed my heart that encounter with god affected me but my prayer life and me spending time with god is what transformed me the encounter with god i had was awesome and it was good and it, it was an interrupting moment i needed that but that's not what transformed my life. It was the daily practical matters after that changed my life. And so you can't expect just to go from Sunday to Sunday, having an encounter with God, being in good godly community, good godly worship, and thinking that that's gonna change your life. That's good, but what's gonna change your life is your daily habits. And that's either gonna change you in the best way or the worst way you that's what's going to change your life is how much time are you spending with God and how much are you letting him sanctify you? And yeah, so that's, that's how you're going to go from a lukewarm Christian to spending, you know, being fully devoted to God. I also want to just throw this in there is watch what you're watching. Watch what you're listening to. Just things like that. Second question literally made me think. So this girl that asked me this, you know who you are. You made me think, sister, and I love you for that. How do you handle the Bible and social media? A harder question for me to answer because sometimes I'm terrible at handling Bible, Bible time and social media. And here's why. So I'm a content creator and I enjoy doing that. But there are a lot of times where I will find myself scrolling because I, you know, you have to kind of keep up with the trend and you try to like just kind of watch and see what's, different things. So I often find myself scrolling a lot of times and if I don't get a handle on that, it can turn into doom scrolling, meaning that you turn around and it's an hour later and you're like, 
I've been on my phone for an hour. What, like, what am I doing with my life? And I'm just going to be so vulnerable here. I'm going to expose myself. A lot of times I spend time with God at night. Um, I, I do spend time with God in the morning like I read my Bible. But a lot of times I try to read my Bible at night. I don't know. It's just been something I've always done. And there are times where I will sit on my bed under my covers. And I have like three blankets. I have like a weighted blanket, a fuzzy blanket, and then my comforter. So the, the air is on high. My room has to be cold whenever I'm sleeping. So my air is on high. And I have my Bible propped up. And sometimes I get on my phone before I read my Bible. And sometimes I will spend an hour on this and then get so tired and look at the time and be like, it's midnight. I need to go to bed. I didn't have time to read my Bible. And sometimes I'm like, I'll just have to do it in the morning. And I'm just being so honest whenever I say that. That's embarrassing for me to even admit that out, out loud. But this will never give me life. This will. Me going through my phone and just on social media, this will never give me life. This will. Also, if you're looking at my phone case, it's from Elevated Faith, and I have a code for you to get 15% off. It's um, linked in my description down below so you guys can go and get this exact phone case because it's literally so cute. Anyways, but how do you grow with God? Because I'm pretty sure that's what that says. Yeah, it is. How do you grow with God is by spending more time with Him. And it can even look like fasting social media. It can. Because I've had to do it. And let me tell you, whenever I get in a place where I know I'm spending too much time on my phone, I will fast social media. I will do a cold turkey, like no more social media until I get my mind right, until I get my priorities straight. And so I even had this thought. I was thinking of, okay, we know if you have an Apple iPhone, it tells you your screen time. If you had to, every single day, you couldn't go to bed until you matched your screen time to your Bible time. So let's go check mine. Let's just look. What? Okay, yesterday, my screen time was three hours. So if I had to every single day match, okay, I spent three hours on my phone. So I'm going to have to spend three hours reading the Bible. Could you do that? Because sometimes, I'm just going to be so honest, I, I do a lot on my phone. I edit a lot on my phone and um, work on my phone, things like that. But, so some days whenever I'm on my phone a lot, or if I'm watching YouTube videos, because my screen time be up, because I'm watching, like, messages, because I listen to a message every morning, so that's like an hour already. Anyways, um, sometimes my screen time can get up to six hours, which is really, really embarrassing. That's on a bad day. It's up to six hours. Imagine having to match six hours of your Bible time. That should, like, question you, okay, I need to get this screen time down and my Bible time up. So you need to just kind of start asking, like, I'm going to even start asking myself this. Okay, Malachi, at the end of the day, if you were to match your screen time to your Bible time, how much time do you have, you know? And so that's just a way that I like check myself, if that makes sense. Okay, the third question is this. What do you suggest for the godly girlies who were having trouble waking up so early? Let me tell you, princess. I was in that same position. I am a morning girl through and through. I love my morning routine. And I'm telling you, if I oversleep, to like nine, my day is basically ruined because I know that I love mornings. I love getting up, moving my body, eating healthy, all of those good things, spending time with God. And if I don't get to do that, my day feels rushed and ruined. So let's talk about how you can wake up early. So number one is setting an expectation for yourself. My alarms, I have four and they're like labeled really cute. They're um, holy girl morning routine. So I have 6 a.m., 6.05, 6.15 and normally that gets me up. Those are my alarms in the morning. That, you should have an expectation for yourself. You don't have to set it that high. I just like waking up early. But for you to be able to get up at 6 a.m., you have to go to sleep at a certain amount of time. Like you can't just girl power through where you go to bed at 11 or 12 and then say i'm still going to get up at six because um yes you can do that have i done that yes m multiple times because a lot of times i'll just grab an energy drink and be fine but your body actually needs so much sleep that's something i've been learning recently i've been going over a lot more nutrition stuff and you actually need like eight hours of sleep eight to ten and ten is kind of excessive so i normally just aim for eight but um I, I was the girl in high school that was always going, going, going. Like I was always, you know, doing things. I was having worship nights. Uh, I was hosting worship nights, getting home late and then getting up early and just going, you know, already like back 
into, you know, I was not getting any sleep. And I used to say this, like, you can literally ask my, my friends. I was like, I don't need sleep. Like, I'm just the type of girl, like, I don't need sleep. You know, yes, you do. Your body needs sleep. And actually, like, it's really bad if you don't get a lot of sleep. So try, try to still get your sleep in. Why am I talking about sleep schedules? I don't know. Okay, so third thing that you can do to kind of help yourself wake up early is ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. Actually, in, in Philippians, sorry, it says, whether I'm well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through God that gives me strength. So you just need to remind yourself that you're that you can't let your mind defeat yourself. Your mind will either defeat or overcome every single time. So you need to make up in your head, I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning. You have to tell yourself that before you go to bed. Whenever you wake up, you are already going to be, if that's going to be drilled in your head, I'm going to wake up early because I know I'm going to spend extra time with God. I'm going to go get a morning run slash morning walk and I'm going to go on a little prayer walk, you know, anything like that. Decide in your head. And then if you wake up and you still don't feel that desire to get up, say, Holy Spirit, give me the strength. Because I've had to do that. And every time, the Holy Spirit gives me strength. And I, and I wake up and I'm good. You need to take control over that. Do not let your mind defeat you. Like if your mind is like, no, just go back to bed. You deserve it. No, get up. Don't let your mind defeat you. Amen. Number four is this. How did you get through seasons of life feeling alone and like nobody sees you? I'm going to also, if you want a little bit more in depth of this, I'm going to redirect you to my testimony. Because that is my testimony. Um... There was a season of life where I was popular. I had a lot of friends. I had a I had a boyfriend, da da da. Like I was popular throughout my town, throughout my school, things like that. And I had an encounter with the Lord and my desires changed and a lot of my desires didn't line up with the people that I was hanging out with. So basically every one of my friends, boyfriend, all of that kind of went away and I went on a whole new path. And so I started spending hours and hours reading my Bible. I put my phone away for two weeks in a little drawer I have in my room. Like I was not connected to anyone. Like I was genuinely just ingesting the word every single day and it was incredible. But um, I went to school. I was, uh, what, what was I? I was a, I was a senior in high school. So seven, I mean, 18 years old. Um, and it was hard because I was, I was alone. Like for the first time in a while, I had felt this harsh loneliness and the enemy really did try to take me out with the pain of being alone. And for a while, I just ignored it because I was so desiring to spend time with God and to get to know more of him that that outweighed every other desire. But after a couple of months, it was to the point where I was like, okay, wait, I'm a senior. Senior year is supposed to be the best year of your life, and I'm alone. Like, I don't have any close friends. Like, whenever we started doing, like, senior activities and stuff, I was like, I don't have someone to do these things with. Like, I'm supposed to be enjoying my last year of high school, but, like, it's it was just, like, a weird thing. And so, it there was a lot of loneliness. And even this year, because I, if you guys have followed me for a while, you know that... I didn't move off to go to college. I stayed in my hometown and I'm doing college online and I'm a preschool teacher. So a lot of times I am really alone because there's not a really big group of people my age in my town anymore. There's a lot of people that have moved off obviously because you're at the age where you move off and I'm working at like more of an adult job. So there's not many people my age. And so there has been a lot of loneliness I've had to deal with this year. How did I overcome that? Because honestly, I don't know. Here's what I did. Turn sadness into gratitude. Because a lot of times the enemy will come at you and try to tempt you with all the sadness. Like, you're so alone. Like, you have no friends. Like, look at you. You have no one to talk to. You can't call anyone. You're in a hole. You're in a pit. And you're all alone. And no one cares about you. And you feel like you're fading. You feel like you're doing terrible in life. You feel awful. And no one cares because there's no one there. That is so real because that's what the enemy tempts me with, with those thoughts. He makes me feel like that. So everything I just said are thoughts that I've had. And how I've overcome those thoughts is I do not walk alone because I know that God walks with me. I have never walked alone. I'm walking the narrow road, but I'm walking it with God. And 
his angels and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God are all walking with me and I do not walk alone. I had to turn that sadness into gratitude. Like, thank you, God, that I'm not walking with the wrong group of people. Thank you, God, that I did not move off and go to college where you did not want me to go. Thank you, God, that you have put me on this path to grow closer to you. And so turning that sadness into gratitude changes your life. And every time you do that, every time you choose to walk the lonely road and invest in your time with God and be obedient to him, because sometimes being obedient to God can can put you on a road where you feel very alone. Being obedient to God can sometimes put you on a road where you feel very alone. And then you begin to question, wait, was this God's will for my life? Like, I, I feel really alone right now. Did I miss God's voice? Did I miss what he was calling me to do? There are times I felt like that, more times than I can count. But listen, it gets better because if I would have moved off and gone to, there was like a couple of different places I was considering moving to. If I would have rushed God's timing and pursued my own, I would not be where I'm at today. You would not be listening to this podcast if I had moved off. Like all the social media stuff that I've been doing this year, I wouldn't have done if I had moved off. And even the friends I've met, you guys know that I've been thriving this year with friends, but from people like all around the world whenever we all come together like all of these amazing content creators and just these amazing men and women of god have become friends with i would not have met any of them if i would have moved off and rushed my own will and so there was a moment where i was deciding what college i was going to go to and god told me to stay here he told me to stay in my hometown and i was not excited about it just to be so honest i was like god did i hear you right like i i don't want to move off i mean i don't want to stay here i wanted to move off and so for months like i said yes to god i said a quick yes to god because i quickly obey him even if i don't understand so i quickly said yes but then i struggled with that i was like whenever we were getting to the end of my senior year i was like whenever people would ask me where are you going off to college and i was like oh i'm staying here it was hard because I was like trying to say it, but I didn't feel very excited about it. And now I am insanely excited that I stay here. Like, thank you, Jesus. He saved me from so much. I don't even know. And he completely just took this year to just let me walk with him and let me just root myself in the prayer room. So um, I, my parents own a church and I can come up here anytime I want. And I do almost every day come up here and I'm, I have a whole church where I can go anywhere I want and I can pray and I can spend time with God and be unbothered like no one comes and talks like it's just me and God and that has changed my life that is what's that is what's completely changed my life now not everyone has that luxury but you can find your quiet time your private place with the Lord whether it's in your car whether it's in your closet whether it's in your bathroom whatever it takes seriously because I've had moments where I didn't have a place to go and I had to like take authority over certain places like my closet was one time my like this little section of my closet I put up scripture on the wall um, my bathroom I just locked my door and spend time with God you know I had my old um what are they even called dell computers that was like whenever you turned it on it sounded like an airplane was like starting up like it was crazy and i would watch on youtube um worship videos and i would pray on my bathroom floor you know it, it really just you know wherever you want so with that being said do i have a scripture for this yes i do okay. to answer your question with scripture here's what i'm going to say it's in philippians chapter 4 verses 12 through uh 13. I know what is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in and in wait in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all th things through Him who gives me strength. And if you are struggling with this, I encourage you to go read Philippians because it talks about choosing joy in every circumstance. Literally at the end of Philippians, I don't know if you can see this, I write down like things that touched my heart and on sticky notes. And one of the things I said was don't let your circumstances dictate your joy. Shift your gaze and rejoice with the Lord always. Because the joy of the Lord is not something that is dependent on your situations. It's dependent on God. Whenever you're getting your joy from God, that's what's... Okay, last question is this. Do you have any tips for keeping praise at the forefront of your mind? This is really good because there are th times where I would be negative. And if you constantly have these negative thoughts in your mind, your whole like everything about you is just going to feel this negative heavy energy you need to be constantly praising the lord and so how i have kept myself like this is 
Number one, God's worthy of my praise. On my good days and on my bad days, he is worthy of my praise. And he's going to get the praise. He's going to get the glory. And so just changing your mindset of even being quick to say, like I have to say it out loud. Whenever something goes wrong, okay, it's okay. God's going to get the glory anyways. God's going to get the praise anyways. And also letting God be my center. Whenever I put God at the center of my life, no matter what's going on, I can come back to him and feel at peace feel at comfort because okay something's not going right in my life there's a situation happening it's okay that's not a good situation but God is my center God is my core so I, whenever I come back to my core he is my peace so I can't worry about this situation or that situation I can't get angry at this situation because God is at my core and God is my peace and he's gonna get the praise I don't know if that makes sense, but actually, um, this is kind of embarrassing, but the other day I was in Fort Worth, Texas at the stockyards, this, um, street, this has never happened to me because I live in a small town, but whenever I do go into bigger towns, just stuff like this happens. A street interviewer came up to me, like, you know, the people like on TikTok or Instagram where they come and just ask random people questions in the street. Yeah, that happened to me. Crazy. And also, I can't find the video anywhere, so I wonder if they even posted it. But someone asked me, what is your Roman Empire? I was like, what? And basically, if you don't know what that is, it's like what you think about the most. Like, basically, it's like a Gen Z term, but I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. But so quickly, I was like, what is my Roman Empire? And I was like, God. And I truly mean that because in and out of everything, I'm always thinking about him always and so he really is our roman empire and in fact he's more than that he's everything and so whenever you get to a place where he is your everything everything comes back to him if that makes sense wow that was wow you also you worship what you think about the most so choose what your mind is consumed and set on amen okay those are all the questions i'm going to answer for today i love you all so much genuinely y'all are like my besties my internet besties and i love you all so insanely much something i do love is i love reading you guys' comments a lot of people you know don't comment i'm telling you every single comment i receive i read the good ones the bad ones i read them i see them i love reading my comments and so i want to hear what your thoughts are on the podcast so please 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 go comment down below just I love reading them. Like, it genuinely brings me so much joy. Like, there have been times where I've been having a rough day. Like, there's one time I can't even remember. Like, I was crying in my car, and I got on my phone, and I checked my YouTube comments, and they were the nicest comments from people. I was literally in tears, like, in gratitude. With that being said, that is the end of the podcast. I'm so excited. I really did like answering you guys' questions. I feel like this was such a fun episode. I will probably do another one of these episodes really soon. So, next week, we're going to be having a special guest on... So I will be with someone else for next week's podcast, but then the week after, who knows what we're going to talk about. So I'm so excited for what is to come in the future. I love you all so much. You guys are incredible and amazing. If you want to connect um, in any way down below in the description box, there are tons of ways that you guys can connect. You guys can actually buy my Bible that I have right here, this exact study Bible that I use. You can go buy the exact same version. I actually had a girl um, DM me and ask me for the link on my Bible and she ordered it. So now we're twins. I have tons of people that have been doing that. I think I had like six or seven people in like a week buy the same Bible I had. So now me and a bunch of my internet besties, you guys have the exact same Bible and we're literally twinning and winning this game of life. So I love it so much. Um, anyways, also there's ways to sew into my ministry down below, things like that. I love you all so much. You guys are incredible and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Only do it.